commend you for holding this hearing. Uh, this is really very important. It's been very enlightening to, to me, and I'm sure the staff that's here and the other members. Uh, and it's such an important issue, and most of the doctors that we're talking about uh, really do fall right in the small business category, which is the jurisdiction of this committee. And uh, and so it's it's a perfect thing for us to be talking about. Uh, I also wanted to mention I can certainly re relate to what uh, uh, Mr. Gonzalez said before uh, relative to when practicing law, uh, the, the challenge that there was when we went from paper and books and Westlaw and all that to the computer and, and it just uh, it was sort of mind boggling and I, I had to sort of laugh when somebody hit McCain recently because he was sort of mystified by the internet and technologies and uh, you know it might be to some degree an age thing but uh, but I, I uh, you can sort of sort of relate to it and uh, I uh, relative to us moving forward with this I think we'd probably be wise to get input from our fellow colleagues who happen to have been medical doctors and practicing medical docs before they got here, both the House and the Senate, both Republicans and Democrats, because we have a quite a few. And, and I think we ought to also rely upon uh, some of the things they've experienced and their instincts in this area. Um, but finally, rather than ask a specific question, I would just ask anyone who would like to uh, comment, uh, is there anything uh, did you have a point? I, I wish I'd have made this point when I was testifying, or uh, you know, I, I wish they would have asked me this, or uh, you know, we, we, one thing we really didn't touch on, you know, that we probably should have. An afterthought: Is there, is there, if there's any one thing you just want to suggest that perhaps we look into, if you want to comment, if we've covered everything, that's fine too, because this has been a pretty comprehensive hearing, and I'll just go down the line. So, Dr. Tally, if there's anything you want to uh, sum up with, or or bring up that we didn't talk about for that matter. Well, I think, uh, thank you. Um, I think there's just two issues. One you just addressed, which is unfortunately right now a lot of comments are being made by those who neither build systems nor actually have to operate them. And I liken this to being, a, I may enjoy the benefits of air travel, but Boeing's not asking me how to build a plane and I'm not telling the, the pilot how to fly it. Mm -hmm. We're asking every pilot to be in a 747. So, second issue, um, so asking those of us who, the people who are going to build the systems and the people who have to use them, I think, is the, as you have said, that is critical to making sure we have some type of accepted um, usage throughout the nation. Second thing is what's just become which uh, available, which is, is still going to be a huge stumbling block, and that is e-prescribing. It looks very good from the top down. The pharmacies and some of the big companies have done a great job establishing the freeway. But getting everybody a car on it right now is going to be the, the real challenge. And right now, one of the things that we has held us back, as is many specialties, because we do have to do a lot of prescribing of narcotics. What we do is involves that a lot. The Schedule II drugs. And the DEA finally, because of your efforts, y'all managed to get the DEA to say, okay, we will allow e electronic prescribing. They've just established some rules, which are in my estimation is right now is a poison pill. There is, in my estimation, there is no way that under the current proposed rules that the vast majority of doctors will undergo the, the details and rigid rules that the DEA has proposed in order to do what they're already doing for other non-Schedule II drugs. We do this every day and to get us to do that rule or those types of encryption and onerous procedures, when most of us would spend 10 seconds writing a prescription, it will force many people to get off of it entirely. So I know this is in a proposed rulemaking, but I just ask you to look very closely at that process. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Pavlik, any? Um, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, j just to emphasize that um, a lot of concerns about uh, protection of, of sensitive information have been raised at the table today. And the earlier the uh, infrastructure is um, built in to protect that information, the, the easier it will be to incorporate it in a system. If you have um, a, a wider degree of adoption than we currently have, trying to plug in privacy protection of sensitive information at a later stage will make the matter a lot more difficult. So now is an excellent opportunity to address those issues. Thank you. Dr. Gallagher? Since you <laughs> Care of children in this country shouldn't be a partisan issue. 
in the last fiscal budget, um, when you remove military non uh, military kinds of fundings and stuff, and you look at the what's happened, one percent of the budget went to children's issues of new spending. Um, and I can get you the reference. Um, if we're really serious about taking care of the next generation, we need to start finding some ways to take better care of kids. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor Hale. Thank you very much. I'd just like to reemphasize again the Gingrich Gonzalez Bill, HR uh, 2377, that uh, I think that's a very good first step because it, it increases the IRS tax deduction for HIT purchase and it also doubles the depreciation the first year. That'll be a big help. And I would also like to say that uh, my own personal health care is given to me by the medical faculty associates at George Washington University, which is here. They have a very strong integrated uh, HIT program. And if you need to see a program where doctors can write a prescription, you walk down to the hospital pharmacy and pick it up or to the physician's office and pick it up. And when you go in for your routine colonoscopy, which I did not too long ago, <laughs> and have all of your record just routinely uh, transfer it over, they have a very good system, which is, I think, the type of thing we would like to see all of medicine have. Thank you very much, doctor. And last but not least, Dr. Bork. Thank you. First and foremost, I am a small business, and I live small business. I love small business. I think that's what drives our country. So bless you all for doing this important work. One thing that was not mentioned earlier, I, it was told to me that we would be able to decrease the number of employees in our office when we went electronic. Well, the good news is we got rid of 28,000 plus charts, so we have some more space. But we have not been able to decrease uh, full-time equivalents, which, again, is affecting our overhead. I do believe voice-activated uh, software programs are, that's the easiest thing that we're all used to. And there's a number of platforms out there that are being developed. And I believe that will be the most user-friendly, personally. And I had mentioned earlier about putting this software and these devices in the hands of medical students and residents because that's the future you know for the for are the children that we're hearing about and so forth and going forward I believe they are used to that technology and as was just mentioned by Dr. Hale another example where this is being done well I believe is the VA system now when I get records from the pardon me, from the VA on a patient, they are very concise and legible and very well done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. I yield back, Madam Chair. Sure. 